Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'd Continuing on in our study of the three fundamentals And the three fundamentals, what are they talking about? What are we talking about when we talk about the three fundamentals? Rashad We're talking about questions where? Oh We're talking about what? Jazakallah and the three questions will be asked in the grave. I don't know where zakat came from. Barakallah. <laughs> the three fundamentals we're talking about, the questions in the graves. What are those three questions? Huh? Uh huh? Who is your Lord? Who is your prophet? Who is your prophet? And what is your deen? Good. Mumtaz. So then he says the three fundamentals and their evidences. He says, Rahimahullah, he says, if you are asked, what are the three fundamentals which are incumbent on all human beings to realize or to know? And then he says, answer by, then that means you should say to them, everyone has to know his deity, meaning his God, his religion, and, his, and the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So that is the answer. The three fundamentals are what? They're the questions of the grave. That's what this whole treatise is about. Is to let every is to affirm that we need to know all Muslims, all creation needs to know these answers because these are the questions of the grave. So every Muslim should know this. That's why it's the three fundamentals. It's fundamental. Every Muslim should begin and know about these, that these questions, they're going to be asked that because it comes from an authentic hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, a very long hadith about this. Then he says, the first fundamental is knowing the law. And those three fundamentals, they were in the four fundamentals that we mentioned in the beginning of the treaties when he said, I'lam rahimakallah, annahu yajibu alayna ta'allam arba masail al-ula. The first thing is, al-ilm. And al ilm huwa, then he, he explained what ilm is. Huwa ma'rifat Allah, it's knowing Allah. Wa ma'rifat al Nabi, wa ma'rifat al Deen al Islam bi adillah. All those three, those three things, those three aspects of knowledge are the three fundamentals. So he spoke in g very general of what we need to know in general as Muslims. And in the first issue he spoke about, all these three fund fundamentals were there. And now he's going to give the tafsil. So he started with that which is general, and now he's bringing the details. He's saying, okay, these three fundamentals, now we're going to talk about the first fundamental. He says the first fundamental is knowing the law, modify the law. He said, if you are asked, who is your Lord? Answer by saying, Allah is my Lord. He is the one who bestowed upon me and all realms with his bounties. He, Azzawajal Subhana, is my true deity. No other is to be worshipped with him. This is demonstrated by Allah saying, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. So the evidence for this, that Allah is your Lord, is this verse, which all of us know, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, which is the Surah Al-Fatiha, which means, praise be to Allah, the cherisher and sustainer of the worlds. That's one translation. Praise means all the praise. Alhamd means all the praise belongs to Allah. All of it. It all goes to Him. Because even if we praise one another, the praise we give to each other is not like your praise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And actually in the Arabic language they might say madh. Another word. Madha wa hamida. They both mean to praise. But Hamida is, is stronger and it has the, you know, we use that. We don't say mother ha Allah. We don't say we praise the law with the word mother. Mother, we could use for each other. But Alhamd, this is for Allah. So Alhamd, and it has an Alif Lam in the front of it that makes it specific. It also emphasizes it. Alhamd, that means the praise. It means all the praise. Alhamdulillah. The, the praise 
All the praise is for Allah. All of it. And why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sustains us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you your rizq. What you eat, what you drink, how you live, it's only it's from Allah. It's from Allah. We do things, we work, we try to do things, but it all the only reason we have what we have is it's from Allah. And then he said, All gods, with the exception of Allah, are false. Letting us know what? That in one sense you could say there are many gods. Meaning that there are many things that people take as God. The Christians take Jesus as God. Some people who say La ilaha illallah, they take Muhammad as a God. They don't say that, but they do it in their actions, in their supplications. They worship him. Some people, they take Krishna as a God, as one of their gods. And all the other deities that in Hinduism are, and the Sikhs take their person as a god, the guy who started their religion, who broke off from Islam and wanted to mix Hinduism and Islam. Many people, some people, they worship their desires. Anything they want, they just do. They say, I only live once, so I'm going to do whatever I want. So they worship their desires. They're going to drink whatever they want, anything haram. They're going to smoke anything they want, haram. They're going to eat anything they want, haram. They're going to do whatever their desires. Oh, I want to do this. No one can stop me. I can do it. It's my right. I'm going to do anything. I don't care if it hurts people. I don't care if it doesn't hurt people. But it's my right. These people, when they go to that extent, they become where they worship their desires. So they take their desires as a God, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran. Some people, they go so low, they take their desires. What they want, they take it as a God. Thank you. So he said, Rahimahullah, all gods with the exception of Allah are false. And then he said, and if you are asked, how did you perceive your deity? I, this translation, I don't like some of the language, but I'll just try to make it as clear as possible. Answer by, I perceived him, or I thought of him, subhanahu wa ta'ala, or I contemplated him through his signs and his creatures. Meaning the things that Allah created, and his signs. Such as, a sign such as the night, the day, the sun, and the moon, and the creatures such as the seven heavens, and the seven worlds, and what is in them, and what is between them, this is demonstrated by the say, by Allah saying, uh, So, in this verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Among his signs are the day, the night and the day. And the sun and the moon, those are some of Allah's signs. Worship not the sun and the moon, but worship Allah who created them. If it is Him you, wor you truly worship. If you truly worship Allah, you don't need an intercessor. You don't need to worship Prophet Muhammad Wasallam. You don't need to supplicate and say, Ya Rasulullah, help me. Ya Rasulullah, take my dua. No, you pray to Allah. You don't say, Ya Isa. Yeah, oh Jesus, please accept my, my worship. Please accept my ibadah. Please do this for me. Please help us. No. We pray to Allah. We ask Allah alone. We don't have to ask any, any person. We don't take an, an angel. We don't take a jinn. Because people do this. They, some people, they supplicate to the jinn. Some people, they supplicate to the angels. There are people here. You, that's why you always have to make dua a lot. Because there are people who have do the evil eye. They, and they... They, and, and people, some of them, they want to cause you harm, so they will ask the jinn to help them. So they worship the shaitan. We don't see the jinn, but they ask and communicate with the jinn. They sacrifice to the jinn. They give their soul. They say, jinn, I, I will give you everything if you give me this in the dunya. Some people, they actually worship the shaitan khalas. No, you know, very seriously. They really worship the devil, the shaitan. They have statues of it with horns and really scary. You know, and they play games, Ouija boards and stuff, and they try to tap into the unseen. 
They try to deal with the unseen. They go to fortune tellers. They do all kind of things as a form of, they don't realize it's worship a lot of times. They just think, some of them, they, a lot of them they do though. They know they're giving themselves. They give themselves because they see that they sometimes get results from them. Sometimes those jinn tell them things that other people don't know. They get lies. Sometimes those jinn help them. They want to get married to a certain person. So sometimes they try to break up marriages. People do witchcraft. It's real. That's how they take their other gods. And that's how they worship other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And all of it is false. Getting back to the ayat, we have to know the ayats, and because in the Arabic, it, 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 uh, not like the translation, in the Arabic, he says, uh, he talks about two types of ayat. Ayat koniya wa ayat shari'a. Ayat koniya means uh, the signs in the creation. So when we say ayat, ayat doesn't just mean ayat in the Quran. In, in Arabic, also it refers in general to signs. So ayat koniya means the things that happen in the creation, the, the sun and the and the moon and the earth rotating on its axis and and the planets orbiting and 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 you and I and the and the intricacies in our bodies and the, the, the things we see in the creation that are fascinating. The sun and the moon and when you go to the forest in Canada and America and you see it so beautiful and the mountains and the way the, the, the snow melts and all of this and it feeds and it gives life and things grow. All of those are the ayat koniya. They are the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in His creation. Then there are the ayat shari'ya. The ayat shari'ya, those are the those are the verses we're talking about in the Quran. Those are the, if you want to say signs, but better to say, we say verses in the Quran. Those are, so here he's talking about ayat koniya. He says, women ayati. What ayat is he talking about? So he's talking about the signs, the koniya. Min ayati koniya. Min ayati yaleilu wa nahar. And from his signs is the day and the night. Wa shamsu wa qamar. And the sun and the moon. La tashjidu li shams. Sujood. Sujood is what? We know it's sujood when we go and we make sujood in salat. That is a type of ibadah. So that's why the translator translated it as worship. Because it is worship. Making sujood, especially uh, in the way that the people do. So, uh, we'll come and Allah orders us, Allah here is prohibiting us, sorry, to not make sujood to the sun and the moon, even though they're beautiful and they're fantastic. When we see the moon, it's so beautiful. And we see the sun, it's so beautiful. It's doing so many things, giving life, giving warmth. Allah says, La tashjidu li shams. And whenever Allah commands something, it's what? We talked about it last time, huh? It's ibadah. It's wajib and it's ibadah. Good. And if Allah prohibits something, it's what? It's No, it's not shirk. It's haram. It doesn't mean it. every shirk is haram, but not every haram is shirk. Every shirk is haram. But not every haram is shirk. If you drink alcohol, there's no shirk in that, but it's a sin. If you smoke weed, there's no shirk in that, but it's a sin. If you don't pray, there's no shirk in that, but it's a major sin. And some say it takes you out of the fold of Islam, and some say it depends on the, the state, but that's not the, the, the mess that we're going to get into right now. The point is, is that Allah has prohibited making sujood to other than Him. So that means it's haram, and that lets us know that sujood, aslan, is an act of ibadah. La tasjidu li shams wala lil qamar wasjidu lillah. Make sujood to Allah. Worship Allah alone. Sujood only to Allah. Alladhi khalaqahunna, the one who created them. That them goes back to what? To the sun and the moon. Allah created the sun and the moon. Alladhi khalaqahunna in kuntum iyahu ta'budun. You'll study this in the Arabic studies later. Iyahu. This means it's for emphasis. This pronoun, this is a pronoun. Dhamir munfasal. 
meaning it's a, a demir, it's a, it's a pronoun which is not connected to uh, to, to a noun. Iyahu, we use it. Iyaka is also one. Iyaka na'budu. That's why we say Iyaka na'budu wa Iyaka nasta'in. It's emphasizing. You could say, uh, and, uh, you know, if it wasn't the Quran, this is what Allah says in the Quran. So anyway, we use this Iya, Iyaka, and things, this, this uh, pronoun to emphasize. Iyaka na'budu. You alone we worship. Iyahu, if it is him ta'budun that you worship, if it is him that you worship, in kuntum iyahu ta'budun, if it is him that you worship. So if it is truly Allah that you worship, then you won't make sujood, you won't worship than Allah, other than Allah, you won't say that, the, say that you can supplicate to the Prophet because he's alive in al-barzakh, because we don't know how al-barzakh is. You won't say you can worship the angels and supplicate to the angels and make sujood to the angels because we don't know how their life is in al-barzakh. We only know from the Quran and the Sunnah. We know that the angels are living creatures, but we can't pray to them. We can't say, oh, Jibreel, help me. Oh, so-and-so, help me. We can't do that. Allah has commanded us to worship Him and Him alone and to make sujood to Him and Him alone and to make dua to Him and Him alone. And the Prophet ﷺ said, dua wa ibadah. Dua, supplication, is ibadah. That's why we can't make ibadah to someone else. We can't make dua to someone else. Then he says, and Allah also said, Inna rabbukum Allah ladhi khalaka samawati wal ar fi sitati ayam thumma stawa ala arsh yukshi al-layla al-nahara yatlubu hathithan wa shamsu wal qamaram wal nujunu sakhirati bi amri ala lahu al khalq wal amr Tabarakallahu Rabbul Alameen. Allah says, Your Lord is Allah who created the heavens and the earth in six days. Then he, is, he rose above his throne. This right here, the translator has some issues there. Then he rose above his throne. He draws the night as a veil over the day, each seeking the other in rapid succession. He created the sun the moon and the stars, all governed by laws under his command. It is not his to create and to, is it not his to create and govern? So Allah is asking the question, is it not mine to govern? That's my right, that you worship me alone and it's, everything is in accordance with my affairs. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying in essence in this verse. Uh, and then he said, and govern, it is not, uh, is it not his to create and to govern? Blessed be Allah, the cherisher and sustainer of the worlds. So here, the Lord means the one who is worshipped. This is also demonstrated in the saying of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Baqarah, Ya yu nasa kudu rabbukum aladhi khalakukum wa aladhina min qablukum la'alakum tatakum aladhi ja'alakum al-ard firash wa s-samaa bina'an wa anzala min as-samaa'i ma'a fa akhraja bihi min tamarati rizqan lakum fa la taj'ali lillahi indadin wa antum ta'amun Allah says, O you people, here Allah addresses who? Mankind, all of mankind. Ya ayu al-nas, O mankind, adore your Lord or worship your Lord, who created you and those who came before you. Allah created everything and everyone. That you may become righteous, who has made the earth your coach, and heavens your canopy, and sent down rain from the heavens, and brought forth therewith fruits for your sustenance. We get our plants, aloe vera in the other room, we get it from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He sent rain, and allowed for those plants to, to live, and have sustenance. And then we benefit from those plants and sent down rain from the heavens and brought forth therewith fruits for your sustenance, then set not up rivals unto Allah, to Allah when you know the truth. So if you know the truth, you will not set up rivals with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you know that Allah gave you all of this, you will not even think twice about supplicating to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We love the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We follow his sunnah, alayhi salatu wa sallam, but we don't worship him, we don't supplicate to him. And here's what Ibn Kathir said. This is the last thing we're going to do. Ibn Kathir said, Al Khalik li hadihil asha huwa mustahik lil ibadah. He says this in his tafsir, in the book 
تفسير up there ابن كثير تفسير ابن كثير he said al khaliq li hadhi al asha huwa mustahiq lil ibadah which means the creator of all of those things he is the one who rightfully deserves to be worshiped no one else deserves to be worshiped no one he's the one who created all this subhanallah when we just study a bug if we study a fly the amazing things about the fly that the fly in one of his wings is a poison in the other wings it's a uh, a cure for his poison. That's why the Prophet ﷺ said that when a fly, if it falls into your container, that you shouldn't pour it out, that you should take the fly out and then put it back in and then take the fly out and you can drink it. Why? Because under one wing is a poison, you know, it's not going to kill you, but it's his, his nastiness, and in the other wing is a cure for that. That is amazing. SubhanAllah, that's just the fly. The injury. Man cannot even create a fly. We can't even make a fly. They're doing genetic engineering. They're doing a lot of amazing things with the permission of Allah. But they can't create it from nothing. This is from Allah Azza wa Jal. The amount, the amazing science that we have is from Allah Azza wa Jal. It's only because of Allah. So, Al-Khalaq, the creator of all of those things, he's the only one worthy of worship. That, that's, that's, uh, the shahid there, and we'll stop there. We ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Wassalamu alaikum. Ala Nabiya Muhammad. Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.